Hi, I'm Drew Kojak, Executive Director of the International Council on Clean Transportation. The ICCT helps government design policies to reduce air pollution from motor vehicles. In this short series of videos, we will share some hard numbers on some hard truths, taken from a recent study exploring how to decarbonize the global transportation sector. But let's start with one hard truth. We're out of time. We have about 15 years to cut global CO2 emissions in half and 30 years to get to net zero if we want any chance in limiting global warming to under one and a half degrees Celsius. We have to achieve these drastic emission reductions while at the same time, the global transportation sector is expected to triple. The good news is it can be done. The red line shows the projection in future emissions. That's 12 billion metric tons in 2020, rising to a projected 21 billion tons in 2050 without further policy action. And this is where we need to get to at the bottom of the graph, 2.6 gigatons by 2050. Now let's look at how we get there, vehicle segment by vehicle segment. The yellow bars on the graph to my right show current emissions and future growth, vehicle segment by vehicle segment, while the blue, green, and orange bars illustrate the reductions that we expect from each of those segments. Again, looking at the bars on my right, we have four primary technology levers from which to pull. Number one, we can improve the energy efficiency of conventional vehicles with policies such as fuel efficiency standards in the United States or CO2 standards in Europe. Number two, we can switch to electric vehicles powered by renewable electricity like wind and solar. This includes battery electric vehicles for passenger cars and hydrogen fuel cells for heavy duty trucks and potentially marine and aviation. Number three, we can lower black carbon emissions, also known as soot, from diesel trucks and buses, which helps reduce air pollution as well as climate change. And number four, we can switch to certain types of renewable biofuels, such as ethanol and biodiesel. In our analysis, we were relatively conservative when forecasting potential reductions from energy efficiency measures, as we will explain in future videos, and we were relatively optimistic about the pace of vehicle electrification. The right policies for efficiency, electrification, and fuels can get the transportation sector about 85% of the way to our target. The policies to encourage transit use, compact city centers, and walking and biking can get us the rest of the way there. It can be done. In the next videos in this series, we'll start to dig into the details. They're all short because as I've said, we're out of time.